Buenos dias, good morning, and welcome to the Big Brave Broadcast. My name is Sadell Chase Rosario, but you can call me your caring correspondent, Chase, and I'm here to tell you that what we have on the inside can make the world a better place. I see you, and I know that you have what it takes to think big and be brave. Each episode, we'll meet strong people, learn powerful words, and practice new skills so that you can choose your own path and tell your own story. Ooh, I'm so excited. Let's get our brains ready to read, rise, and revolutionize. And now for today's top story. Thanks, Correspondent Chase. And now for today's top story. So you know how when you guys are in the car with your grown-ups and they're driving and there's something that tells them when to go and when to stop? Well, today we're going to meet a man by the name of Garrett Morgan. He's the one that invented that fancy invention called a traffic light. But I don't want to tell you guys too much about it. Let's go to the professor and go. Hey, guys. I was just wondering, if Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, how much actually is a peck? Anyway, welcome back to those of you who've been here before. And if you're new, I am the professor. In a moment, we're going to delve into our person of importance here for uh, this week. But one thing I wanted to get into real quick is to define someone uh, means to explain who they are. So if I'm defining you, I'm explaining who you are. And so for me, I'm defined as by being the professor. You know me as the professor. That's how I'm defined. Ms. Baker is defined as being a teacher. That explains who she is. Coach Fran, by being a coach. And Grandmother Nature, not by being a grandmother, but rather by leaping tall buildings in a single jump. Ask her afterwards. You'll see it's really an amazing, amazing thing. So all of us can be explained by our job, at least in part. But... What if you don't just have one job? You know what comes next. Thunderdome! All right, here we are in the Thunderdome, but shh, you guys know, already know. It's a secret. Now, before we get to growing our brains, you know what comes next. Say it with me now. I can learn Big brave things. Let's go. Born in Kentucky in 1877, Garrett Morgan grew up after the Civil War. Now, we talked about the Civil War a couple times here, guys. So let's remember. Remember, the Civil War was between the North and the South. And the United States was fighting over whether or not they should have slavery. The North didn't want slavery. The South did want slavery. And the North did win. And President Lincoln signed this paper called the Emancipation Proclamation. Now, what does that mean? Basically, it said slavery was over. But it's not that easy because especially at that time, there's a big difference between just signing papers and taking the time to change people's minds. So how did that affect Garrett Morgan? Well, he had to move north because in Kentucky, they still looked at you poorly if you were African-American. So to get the chances he wanted, he had to move into, so to Ohio he went. And when he was in Ohio, he started immediately working with his hands for somebody. But he didn't stop there. Since he left school in Kentucky to go up into Ohio to get the opportunities that he wanted, he also knew he had to keep up with his own education. He couldn't just stop going to school altogether just because he was making money. So what did he do? He used the money he got from that job working with his hands to go and get a tutor. So as he was doing the one job, he was also still learning because he always wanted to do more. And do more he did, because he went from sweeping floors in a sewing machine factory to owning his own sewing machine repair shop. Since he was always trying to learn more, look at what happened to him. He went from working on the machines, then he started to learn how to fix them, and that was what made him be successful. But he continued to be curious though still, because he didn't just stop there. Again, always working to be better. So he didn't just stop at sewing machines. 
He wanted to continue to make sure that people were safe. He created a safety hood for firefighters. Tres, dos, uno. He created a safety hood for firefighters to help fight the smoke during the fires. It was so big and successful that fire departments across the country started using his idea. But that still wasn't all. So during this time, too, he was still curious, and his successes from the sewing machine fact store and the safety hoods meant he could keep working on things to help make people better and do more and more good. So he took that problem, he took on the problem of cars and horse-drawn carriages, because at this time, we were just starting to get more and more cars in the streets. So cars, though, and horse-drawn carriages kept causing accidents because they kept running into each other. So Garrett Morgan thought, okay, how do I solve that problem? And so he was actually responsible for creating the first traffic signals. And those same traffic signals became today what you and I know as just traffic lights. At the time, they were called traffic signals. And there were no lights involved. But think about it today with all the cars you see going on in the streets when you go back and forth to places. Think about what it would be like if there were no traffic lights at all. It'd be kind of crazy. Your job doesn't make you who you are. How do you treat other people? How do you treat the people that are closest to you? What are you trying to do to make the world better? Garrett Morgan didn't want to simply be defined as the guy who worked with his hands, who worked in the sewing machine factory shop, or even the guy who created the safety hoods. He kept working and kept doing his best to make the world better. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to try and see if I could branch out to be a fighter. Wow, we learned so much about Garrett Morgan, but I wonder how he was feeling. Who can we go to to tell us how he was feeling? That's right, Detective Ortiz. And now to Detective Ortiz. Figure out how Garrett Morgan felt. Well, in order to find out how, detectives like me ask five questions. Who, what, when, where, and why. Oh, uh, what's the first question? Who did we learn about? Uh... You found who? Now it's time for the handshake group. Ooh. I like that. All right, what's next? Exactly. What did they do? Oh. You found what? <gasps> now it's time for the grip and elbow. You found what? Now it's time for the grip and elbow. Nice. What's it time for now? When in time was this happening? Oh, sorry. You found when? Now it's time to double up. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Nice. All right. Where do we go from here? Exactly. Where did this take place? Oh. You fell where? Now it's time to add a fist bump. Ooh. Nice. Why can I never remember the last question? Why did they say it with me? Revolutionize! You fell wide. Now it's time for the shoulder bump. Oh, I see a letter. I see a letter. Y'all know what letter this makes? Exactly an H. An H for how? For how Garrett Morgan was feeling. Let's see. 
Great job, junior detectives. You guys found the feelings word. You found the word interested. I don't know what that word means. Who can we go to to tell us what that word means? That's right, Grandmother Nature. And now to Grandmother Nature with the feeling words weather. Whether you're feeling happy or whether you're feeling sad, whether you feel surprised or whether you're feeling mad, whatever the weather, we'll face it together, however you're feeling today. Hi guys, and welcome to the Feeling Words Weather. I'm your grandmother nature, and I feel so happy to see you today. I heard that you found the feelings word with Detective Ortiz. Do you remember what it was? What's that? <gasps> interested. Very interesting. When you feel interested, it's like you're really excited and inspired about something. I heard that you guys learned about Garrett Morgan today. He was a famous inventor. I'm sure he was feeling very interested to figure out how things went together. Wait. Oh, I see. Out the window. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No. It's La Valiente Bilingue. Let's see her. La valiente, 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 bilingüe sharing her superpower de dos lenguajes. La valiente, 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 bilingüe. Soy yo, la valiente bilingüe. It is I, la valiente bilingüe. Y yo tengo el poder de hablar en dos lenguajes. And I have the power to speak in two languages. Y estoy aquí para compartir este poder con todos ustedes. Today, we learned the word interested. Are you ready to use our powers? Get ready. En español se dice... Interesado, interesado. Say it with me. I feel interested. Yo me siento interesado. And when you feel interested, you feel like you want to learn more about something. Hmm, interested. Es cuando te sientes que quieres saber más sobre algo. Interesado. Okay, my super speakers, great job. See you next time. Wow, I feel very interested in learning more Spanish. We learned interested is also interesado in Spanish. Awesome. Well, let's figure out which category the word goes into. Bing, right there in living color. Is it a sad word? Is it a mad word? Is it a scared word? Is it a joyful word? Is it a powerful word? Or is it a peaceful word? What do you think? Interested. I feel interested. I think it could go in two categories. I think it could be a joyful word because when you're interested in something, it usually makes you happy. I also think it can be a powerful word because when you feel interested, you get focused and that can give you lots of power. Garrett Morgan certainly used it as power to invent things. Well, guys, I got to go, but I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks, Grandmother Nature. We learned what the word interested means and we learned how to say it in Spanish, interesado. I am certainly interesado in listening and learning many new words. That sounds like a social skill, listening positions. But who can we go to to tell us about social skills? That's right, Coach Fran. And now to Coach Fran with social skills sports. Let's get ready to learn skills, social skills. I said to stop, take a breath. 
I said to stop, take a breath. I said to think, what's my plan? I said to think, what's my plan? I said to stop, take a breath, then think, what's my plan? I said to stop, take a breath, then think, what's my plan? Uh-huh, uh-huh, all right, all right. Now I've got it, now I've got it. Here we go, here we go. Hiya, sports fans, this is Coach Fran, and I'm a fan of having a plan. Got lots of plans for the big game, but we're not talking about games. We're talking about life, and you need social skills for life. Well, today, we're going to be doing a really important skill, and it's really important if you want to be a good learner. If you want to learn, you got to listen. That's right. Got to use these big old ears of yours. But listening isn't just with your ears. It's with your whole body. So today, we're going to learn about listening position. Oh, golly gosh, gee, there it is right there on the board. All right. Now, what is listening position? Let me tell you. It's how you show someone that you're listening. Have you ever had the situation where you think someone's listening, you're telling them something important, and they're like doing something else, I don't know, playing with their nails, fixing their hat, picking their nose? They're not listening. You want them to show you listening position, and you want to show listening position too. When your ma or your pa or your sister or your brother or your teacher is talking, you want to make sure you're using this skill. So, let's go through the steps. Step one, we're going to have our head up. That means that you can see what the other person is saying. Also, when your head's down like this, even if you say you're listening, not very respectful. Step two, we're going to have our voice off. That means that we're not going to say anything when someone else is talking. That helps us listen. Step three, we're going to have our body calm. If you're all jittery, moving around. Maybe they're going to forget what they're even saying to you. And step four, we're going to have our eyes on. Remember, if your eyes are on, that means that you can see what that person is saying. Now, I like to play a little game with this skill. It's super fun. We're going to see how fast you can run through all four steps. So, I'm going to go through them nice and slow. I want you to do them with me. Ready? Head up. Voice off. Body calm, eyes on. Now I'm going to do it a little faster. Ready? Head up, voice off, body calm, eyes on. Now I'm going to do it a little faster. Head up, voice off, body calm, eyes on. I want to see who can do it the fastest. Ready, set, go. Did you do it quick? Let's do it one more time. Ready? Woo! Wow! You guys are speedier than some of my athletes out there on the field. Wow! Now that is some serious listening. Well, I gotta go because I'm sure somebody has got something that I want to listen to. Well, see you guys next time. Awesome plan, Coach Fran. Head up, voice off, body calm, eyes on. I like that. Well, that's all the time I have with you guys today. But remember that you have the power to chase your dreams and change the world. And now to Jaquan Ortiz to tell us what we've learned today. Hello, my name is Jaquan. And now it's time for What Have We Learned Today? Today we met Garrick Morgan. We learned, we learned a new word, interested. Say it with me. I feel interested. And we learned a new social skill. Well, that's all the time we have for now, but just remember to think big and be brave. Bye!